Hello friends, this video on basic concepts of chemistry part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 9. Now let's understand a very critical theory called Dalton's Atomic Theory. It says that, in fact this guy combines a lot of other theories to form one big theory called Dalton's Atomic Theory that states that matter consists of indivisible atom. But again that's not true today. We see that atoms can be divided into neutrons, protons and electrons. And then if you see that now neutrons, protons and electrons can also be divided into uh, different parts. But this was this is wrong now, but for that time he's told that matter is uh, consists of atoms which is indivisible. He told that it is an 1800s era. All the atoms of a given element have identical properties, including identical mass. And atoms of different elements differ in mass. For example, you take any particular uh, matter, for example, gold, you will see that the atom of these has a particular property. And if you take atom of gold and got raw silver or atom of carbon, right, all these atoms will have different mass and different properties. But all this atom of gold will have similar properties. That's how it is. When atom, he told, is a building block of a particular element and that will have a unique characteristic, right? Compounds are formed when two different metals are uh, combined in a fixed ratio. You see, this is extension of laws of uh, multiple, sorry, law of uh, proportion or something is there. Until. Law of definite proportion that says that in any, any compound, the elements are in different proportion, right? That's what he has told again, that the compounds are formed when two atoms are combined in a fixed ratio. And he also told chemical reaction involves nothing but reorganization of atoms. Because they said that you can't create atoms, you can't destroy atoms in a chemical reaction. Atoms can neither be created nor can be destroyed in a chemical reaction. But not all these theories are true. We have seen that many of these are wrong also. For example, it says atom is indivisible, that is wrong. And a lot of radioactive uh, uh, reactions, you see that the atoms are broken actually into other atoms. So this part is also not correct. But these two are correct today also. Let's talk about atomic mass. Atomic mass is what? It is nothing but mass of atom. Correct? Atomic mass is nothing but mass of an atom. Now the question is, how is the atomic mass determined today? Do we know this? I think you must know this. Today we use have we have sophisticated techniques such as mass spectrometer. These techniques are used to find the atomic mass of any atom. But in 19th century, that is 1800 something, 1803, 1809, these eras, if you see, we talked a lot about atomic mass. When we have talked about periodic table in class 10, we talk about uh, atomic mass in that era, right? Mendeley periodic table, these all had used atomic mass. That time these techniques were not there, but still we had atomic mass. How we, the chemists used to find atomic mass in that era? Because this spectrometry is a, a gift from, you can say that physics, which used the magnetic field, electric field and those kind of stuff, which you will learn, I think in the class 12, yeah, class 12 physics, we learn all these things. So, or class 11 physics, yeah, I think in class 11 physics, we learn all these things. Now the question is, how do we, uh, how do chemists used to find atomic mass in 19th century? So they used to find using stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is nothing but you do a lot of chemical reactions and then you find the atomic mass and they used to find the atomic mass related to hydrogen. And they considered hydrogen as atomic mass 1. And then they used to find the atomic mass of any other element related to hydrogen using stoichiometry. For example, hydrogen reacts with oxygen to give water. Though they now know the balance reaction, they'll find the mass of this, mass of this, mass of this. And with that, a lot of stoichiometric calculation, they'll find the atomic mass of oxygen in this case. So similarly, they used to perform a lot of chemical reaction with precision to find the atomic mass. I think we'll, we'll uh, take few examples where we'll be given some reactions and we have to find the atomic mass. We'll do that. 
understand that in 8, 19th centuries, that is 1800 era, 1803, 1809, 1850, those kind of eras, when mass spectrometry physics instrument was not there, they the chemists used to use the stoichiometry to find atomic mass of the in fact, that time the whole chemistry world or the whole the, the life of chemist was spent only to find atomic mass because that was the most critical thing that time, right? So the moment you talk about chemistry at that time, you generally talk about atomic mass, finding atomic mass from different reactions. And that's why you see in some of the movies when you talk about chemistry labs, that is a lot of chemicals and the chemist will just keep doing uh, reactions, 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 and observing stuffs to find the atomic mass. But not is not required because you have this mass spectrometer. With that, you can easily find the atomic mass. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.